Hey, hey developers, today I'm going to show you how to create an e-commerce site, a basic e-commerce site that you might be able to show in your portfolio using Coder.com. Now, Coder.com is a cloud-based IDE. You can see here from this website, I'm already logged in. You can create projects in it. You actually have a, a, like a Linux container built right into the app, so you can NPM install things, you can run tests, you can do everything a normal your normal computer would do, but you're actually using it in the browser in this ID. And one feature it has that the other ID cloud IDs out there don't have is this awesome fast time feature, which allows you to really quickly install things, run tests, builds. It just it's an amazing cool feature, so uh, I'd highly recommend you guys check it out. So if you are interested in coder.com, I'm gonna put a link below with uh, where you can go to sign up. It is in public alpha right now, so anybody can sign up. It is an alpha, so they are still making changes. There are a few bugs here and there, but it's a pretty solid platform from what I've used it so far. So uh, I'm logged in here. Let's go ahead and create this project. And uh, we're gonna go create this project over a few videos. So this one, we're just gonna get some things set up. So I'm going to click Create Project. Like I said, just go to coder.com and sign up for the free account to get started. And we're gonna call project name, I'm gonna call it e, well, we'll call it e-commerce, doesn't really matter. And we'll call it e, for e description, we'll call it e-commerce site. You can see I already have a few other projects here from I've been playing around. And then I'm gonna open in IDE. And you can see here, it'll just take a few moments and it will open up. Okay, everything was created here. So you can see here, we are on the coder.com IDE. And you could tell from right here, it gives you a little bit of hints on what you could, you could do. Uh, I mentioned fast time earlier. That's fast dynamically scales your container resources for maximum performance. So it's a good idea to have that on, especially when you're doing NPM installs, you're building, things like that. Container host is your ultra powerful Linux machine. So you have a, a basically a whole Linux server in your browser here. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna click this button here and this opens up the terminal. And we could just create everything manually here, but I really like to use the terminal because I'm gonna install Angular CLI. And there's a couple of gotchas that you'll need to know since you're using coder.com um, or anything where you're using like a, a cloud IDE. So what we want to do is install the Angular CLI. So to do that, we do npm install, and we do tac g. So we'll have it global, um, and we'll do Angular slash CLI. And what this does, it'll install the Angular CLI. This is the preferred way to get up and running on an Angular project. And if we clear it here, we can do ng dash dash help. And it kind of gives you a little bit of explanation you can do. You can do add, new, generate, update. Uh, we're going to do nuke, nuke, because creates a new directory, new Angular app. So we're going to do ng new, and we're going to call it ecom. And this will go ahead and create the directory structure. It'll create all the scaffolding and all the boilerplate that we need to get started. It has the webpack, has everything we need. And so this will just take a minute. OK, uh, the site is up and running. Uh, it's, it's actually installed so we can take a look at it here if we go to ecom change directory ecom of course you see it here in this directory too you can see all the files that were installed you can see here's the directory i want to go ahead and install one more thing i'm going to install angular material because we're going to use that later for some of the some of the things that we want to do with the site so i'm going to copy and paste it basically tac tac save so we're saving it as a dependency and we're going to install add angular material, add angular CDK, and add angular animations. And that'll give us everything we need to get started here. And we'll look at that later on, not in this video. OK, great. Everything's installed. Now, this is there is one gotcha. Since we're using a cloud IDE, um, typically the way you run an Angular server, server is you type in ng serve. And what this does is it runs a local server on the box it's locally, it, uh, it binds to local host on port 4200 and it uh, compiles all your modules and basically it's a development server, it has hot reloading and everything you need. You can see here it's running right now. However, um, if you're using 
coder.com and you click on this little button here, which is connect to your web server and you try to open it up in the browser, it's uh, not gonna work. So you're probably wondering why. And sometimes you'll actually get a message that you got invalid host header, um, which is a reason because it's behind a proxy. So to, to fix that, there's actually a command, and this is the same for, there's a couple ways to fix it. So if you're using Vue.js, and, and you might even have problems with React, you can go into your Webpack config and you can do this disable host check. It's a pretty simple solution. If you just Google it, there's a bunch of Stack Overflow options because people have seen this in other cloud IDs. So what I can do here is if I run a command like this, which I'm going to copy and paste, ng serve tac tac host, and I put the host port as 0 .0 .0 .0, and I put the port 8080, and then I put, this is the most important part, tac tac disable host check, and I hit enter. This will run the server without this host check, and you'll get a warning when you run it that says it's actually not secure, but since we're just doing this for development purposes, obviously if we would wanna run this for real, we would build it and then put it somewhere. But you can see here now it's running in this with this disable host check. Don't worry about the warning. Now if you click here and open in browser, it actually loads the kind of welcome hello world site. So we can see definitely it's working. That's good to know. Um, now you can click on it. And like I said, if you're using React or Vue and you run into some invalid host header, there's a ton of Stack Overflow articles. I ran into the same problem I had to ask, but it's a pretty easy fix. So now we have our, our host ready here and we can kind of poke around a little bit. So we can look at our app and one nice thing about uh, the aboutcoder.com, it has TypeScript support. So you have syntax highlighting, it understands TypeScript, you're not gonna get any weird errors there. If we look in our component.html file, here it is. So we can just make sure it works. Hello there. And remember, you can file, save all files, or control S. If you're in Mac, it's a little different. So you can see it's a hot reloading, as you expect. It says hello there at the bottom. Um, we don't have to worry about it. So that's good news. Uh, let's see here. We can also open up another terminal. So if we can, we can have the server running in this one, but we can also have another server running if we want to do something else, uh, another terminal running, that is and we can go in and grep for things or we can install more modules. Now, since we're using the Angular app, we have a lot of different ways we can set up our application. So uh, we have the Hello World working and we have some other dependencies, but we have this app folder with our app stuff in it. But I kind of want to do a dashboard well, this is what I wanna do. I wanna have a header at the top and then a footer at the bottom and then like the site in the middle. So what I think I wanna do is I'll go ahead and I'll generate a component for the header and I generate a component for the uh, footer and then I'm going to have uh, the main site. So let's do that. So we'll do ng generate. So you can either type generate component or for short, you can just do ngg c, and then we're just gonna call this first thing called header. I should have created, oh, created in the app folder. So if we go source, app, now we have a header here. And let's go ahead and create a footer. Yep, now we have a footer and header. And then we'll also create one more. We'll, we'll create a, a welcome component. That'll be the front page. And that will show up here. Here's our welcome. So if we look in the HTML file, it says welcome works. Let's do hello from welcome, control S. And then let's take a look at so now we have the footer, the header, and the welcome. Let's take a look at the router. So, so let's go ahead and generate a route. We'll do ng gm route dash dash routing. And that will create a route for us. So here's our routing module. 
right now. And then we just need to uh, set it up here. Okay, so let's set up our route here. We're gonna have in a path. And then we're going to just put in the component here and we're gonna call the uh, welcome component. So that'd be the welcome component right here. And we obviously need to add that in. So we're going to import the welcome component from, we'll go dash dash welcome, put in here dash dash welcome. And then we'll be the welcome dot component. And we'll save it. And now we just need to make sure it's in our app module. So we'll go to our app module here. And then in our imports, we're gonna import in the route module. And then we'll import it in here, import route module from route uh, we'll make sure we have route module right here. Dot module. And what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna delete all of this. And right now I'm just gonna have a router outlet. And what this does is this tells Angular this is gonna be an entry point on our app component for our routes. Okay, I think we need to add in one more thing, this router module and then we'll make sure we import it in. So what this does is it tells Angular that we're gonna be using Angular routes. So we have to make sure we have the router module installed here and we'll save it. And the last thing we need to do is we're gonna make this for child and we're actually gonna change this from for child to for root. I'm gonna save it, refresh it. And now I see my, my route hello from welcome. So. Basically what we had to do is once we added this route route module, I set up my one and only path for the component welcome component. I exported the router route routing module, which then was imported inside here, this route module here. And then I imported into the app module, which is right here. I also had to add in the router module as well, which is an angular router that makes it so it understands what the router outlet is. Then I had to make sure the router outlet was here. So there's a lot of boilerplate in Angular, but uh, once you get it working, it makes a lot of sense. So now, since that we have now that we have this welcome component here, let's see if we can add the footer and header to it. So we're going to go in the footer here. We're going to put in footer works here, and the header. If you look inside here, it has header works. So let's see if we can just import those in. So in the welcome component, I'm gonna go into the HTML here and I'm just gonna put in, and if you look here, they actually have the name. So if you go into the TS file, you can see the name, the selector is app header. So this is gonna be the name of the component that we wanna use. And if we look at footer, it says app footer. So if we go back into our welcome component, we can go app header and then close it. And then below this, we'll do our app footer. So app footer, and we'll close it. And we'll save it, and we'll see what it looks like here. So great, so now we see header works at the top, footer works, hello from welcome. So we have made some progress so far. So in our next video, we'll go ahead and explore more about Angular. We'll go ahead and put in some actual header information using our Angular materials and we'll add some footer information and we'll start building this e-commerce site. So stay tuned. If you guys like these type of videos, make sure you click that subscribe and click that like button. That really helps me. And let me know below what you think of Coder.com and Angular. Thanks.